So the final verse ends with the same riff variations, and then we're going into chorus two. Chorus two is exactly the same as the first chorus, but it does not end with three arpeggios. It ends with what Rush called a flying brick, inner band shorthand for the whole band pounding eighth notes for a transition. You can hear flying bricks when the guitar goes electric at the beginning of the tree and then the spirit of radio becoming a section. Here they do a flying brick into a complete stop, a brick wall, so to speak, and then Lifeson takes it away into a solo. His big showcase, his favorite, and it's a now for something completely different moment. But when you look at the bass, the bass is playing the roots of the chorus, adding a fourth bar of G sharp. So now instead of a three bar rep, it's a four bar rep. G sharp to E to F sharp to G sharp. The drums and bass are slowed down, implying sort of a 12 8 feel. And Neil and Getty are treating the waltz time as 12 8 as live scene solo, and they gradually speed up. Here it pushes the groove into 3 4 and then starts unleashing all these drum fills, and then the wildest thing happens. It's my favorite part of the song. Here it starts playing in 4 4, and Getty starts to play something really familiar. Getty stops playing in sets of 4 and he reverts back to playing in sets of 3, because he's now playing the bass part of the first half of the chorus. If you're looping 3 bars, that's 9 beat reps. It's not divisible by 2. Pierre has to start playing backwards to the beat. So what he does is he plays 4-4 four, four for three bars because four across three is the same as three across four. And then starts playing a bar early and in 4-4 four, four, right before Getty starts looping the three. So what he's doing is he's anticipating coming in on the one of the chorus, but he's doing it like a lot of bars early. Lyson finishes the solo, hits that high sustained note. He starts arpeggiating. You think, okay, we're going into the three, four of the chorus again. But Peart never stops. Peart drives the whole thing straight through the waltz part of the chorus in 4-4. Four, four because, <laughs> because it's a 21-beat section, he then has to do a bar-long fill in that mysterious seventh bar so that they can all land properly into the 4-4 four, four section. It's super, super exciting and, and clever. You know, he has a big choice to make. There's an odd number of beats before the chorus hits and an odd number of beats in the chorus. He could have played straight through and put the snare on the one of the first bar of the chorus. It's a little too weird. More thoughts on that later. I also think it's interesting that the double chorus, which ends this classic structure, it's kind of there but not there. Because the solo is chorus. It's all the same chords, and it's basically the same harmonic rhythm, but it doesn't feel like a chorus until the chorus comes in. At the point of the chorus coming in, it's we've been hearing basically the same three chords for two minutes or something crazy. Finally, you can see how much real estate this chorus really takes up. It's enormous. We are looping G sharp, E, and F sharp for the entire second half of the song without break. <laughs> it's great. It's just, it's wild. By the way, you never hear the riff again. Riff is in the rear view. So we're just cycling through the chords. It's never boring. They're constant rhythmic and energy changes. They do the chorus one last time, Getty repeats the final line, and then they're rocking out. Again, across all the same chords. Guitar does some embellishments. He's playing the F sharp and the E as major triads now. He's playing them high on the neck. Basically, the first uncomplicated major triads of the entire song. It's the first chord that's not a suspension or a power chord or some kind of stacked jazz chord. They only show up in the final, I don't know, 10 seconds of the song. It's just a great ride out. It's awesome. As the song ends on a, the big G sharp sus four seven, Getty plays something really interesting. It's basically free time instead of like, you know, a standard arpeggio or something. Well, the first three notes are stacked fifths with the classic Andy Summers, and he starts fooling around in that F sharp space. He pulls the chord back to the preceding chord, and there's melancholy. It's a nod to the cyclical nature of this emotion. He's never going to completely resolve it. It's always going to be there as fun as the fun can be. Well, we all know Neil Peart literally ran <laughs> off the stage down the tunnel and out at the end of every show. So it's a very cool musical gesture, very similar, in fact, to the nine beat arpeggio figure that ends the first chorus. Yes, this was fun, but now the unfun stuff will begin again. And Getty does it in six notes and they're out of there, baby.